Welcome to Replo 201 Product Components. A very common component to use on Replo pages in your Shopify store is a buy box, which displays information about a product and includes an ATC or add to cart button. Replo automatically integrates with your Shopify store's product listing in order to display product information anywhere on any Replo page. In this video, we're going to cover how you can set one up, all the nuances of using a product component and the magic of dynamic data, which powers product components. Let's get started. The first thing to call out here is that product components can be put on any Replo page. So this includes things like listicles, advertorials, regular sales pages. And this is different from a product page a PDP because PDPs will override your themes existing product page that lives on a slash product URL. With product components, you give your customers the ability to buy a product and have all the information that they need to buy a product, regardless of what type of blow page you're building on. The power of Replo's product components comes from dynamic data. Simply our ability go into your Shopify catalog and dynamically show information from there without you having to manually copy and paste things. Things like your product images, product title, pricing, etc., all can be pulled dynamically. And whenever you make a change in Shopify, it will automatically reflect anywhere it's referenced on a Replo page. When you first install Replo, you will not see your own products. After you install Shopify, you're able to swap out of placeholder products and into your own. Let's do that really quickly. After you select your product container, you're going to go into the config element and go select product. Here we have the Replo enamel mug and you can see it's listed under the placeholders. All you have to do to click your own products is hit on online store and then select the product that you want. As you can see, all of these that have been dynamically set are updated. The image, the title, the description, the price, and all of the other details. To further illustrate just how effective dynamic data can be, we're actually going to go into Shopify and make some adjustments to this product title so you can see it reflected in real time. Let's pop over to Shopify, go to products, and click on the product that we're referencing in a Replo page. And all I'm going to do is just edit this title, hit save. That's saved now. We'll go back into Replo and we're going to do a quick refresh. And as you can see, the product title has automatically updated without us having to do any additional work. This will work across all of the different instances in which you reference products from your catalog. Anytime you make a change in Shopify, it will automatically reflect on your upload pages. Now that we have a basic understanding of what product components are, let's go ahead and add them to our page. We're going to come over to the insert tab, go over to components and scroll down to product. And we're just going to pull in a product box. We now have an element that dynamically references product content pulled directly from your Shopify catalog. If I want to change the product as we did previously, we can come over to the config panel after we select the product container and simply change out the product. Let's go ahead and do Repello to the SQL, our second version of our Cola. One thing to mention is that all of our templates are mobile optimized out of the box. You don't have to worry about having to tweak them when you pull in our pre-made components or if you use any of our custom templates, you can just get straight to building and know that it's going to work across all of the major device sizes. Now that we have this product box, let's go ahead and make this a bit more useful. The first thing I want to do is I want to customize the way some of these things look. Let's say I don't want to actually have this dollar sign on the price. So I can let's select this and go to design and our new dynamic data function allows you to contextually change how this looks. So let's just go ahead and change from currency to plane, and we can leave this as is. Since this product does technically have a subscription plan, we have the selling plan discount automatically applied. There isn't actually a change here, so we're just gonna leave this as is, but it's good to know that we can toggle this on or off on the fly. Now that we've changed the price, we're also going to change the font. And again, you can see we're inheriting all of the fonts from the page, but we can manually override things. Let's say we want to go to Poppins and we've changed the font and we want to change this font weight to medium. And we want to change it to Poppins again as well. So we've made some quick design changes. We have this very basic product component box. This buy box allows people to buy stuff. It's got basic information about what the product is. And we need to give customers the ability to select different options and variants. If you have subscriptions, maybe even offer subscriptions. Before we go too far into this, I'm gonna quickly cover the difference between options and variants. 
In Shopify, options are all the different types of elements. So flavor in this particular product, sugar content, each one of these, cherry, lemon, lime, cola, normal diet, zero sugar, these are all options. Variants are a combination of options. So a zero sugar cherry, that would be a variant. Going back into Replo, we can actually give customers the option to either add variants or allow customers to create a variant by selecting different options. Let's go ahead and do both. First, we'll go over to insert, go to components, we'll go down to product. We're gonna scroll down to variants. I'm just gonna show you just what this looks like. Okay, you can see this extends all the way across the page. You can style this to make sure this wraps and fits within the container. That's not going to be covered in this particular video. What I do wanna show you is you can see that all the different options are listed here. Cherry normal, cherry diet, cherry zero sugar, lemon lime normal, so on and so forth. If you don't wanna show all of them, you do have the ability in the config menu under variants to unselect which ones you don't wanna show. So let's say we just wanna show all the cherry ones and you can see only the cherry are listed. But what if you actually want the customers to be able to select the flavor and select the sugar content? That's when you give people the ability to select specific options by themselves. To do that, go back to insert, components, product, we'll scroll down, and we're going to an options element. And there are different ways you can show this, obviously. You can do drop downs, radio buttons. This is a simple list. Now we're going to select flavor for this, and I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut to copy and paste this option list and create a second one. And I'm going to switch this one to sugar content. As before, I have all the ones listed, but if I don't want to show a certain option like zero sugar, I can simply hide that. And this is a really quick way that you can add more content to your product components to give customers the ability to shop in the way that makes sense, both for your business and for their buying journey. Now that we've got some variants and option selectors in our product component, we're gonna add one more thing, and that is going to be a subscribe and save component. We are going to go to insert components product and we're going to go pull in the subscribe and save element and we've got the one-time purchase and the subscribe and save pulled dynamically from the products you can see all the different variants we're actually just going to go the selling plans so we get the 99 and the 79 for each of the different variants the last thing is we're going to hit on the add to cart button and we're going to look at the interaction and we're going to see the product that's being added to cart is the dynamic value. It's what the customer selected. We also have a quantity selector in the selected quantity. Since we don't have one yet, let's go quickly add one before we keep going. Components, product, and we'll do quantity selector. Great. As with any other Replo component, you do have the ability to style all of these to your cart's content. Let's go back to the interaction. So click on the button, click over to interaction. Dynamic value on what product is being selected what quantity is being selected, and the selling plan. So we can default set it to subscription, but since we want customers to have the choice, we're gonna click the add dynamic data, and we do selected selling plan. Go to part cart after, we're gonna uncheck this. We're actually gonna redirect this to checkout, and we'll hit save. And just like that, you've not only configured a product component, but you've also been able to add in variant and option selectors, subscription selling plans, quantity selectors, and much more. If you want to see a deeper video on how to use subscription selling plans, click on the link above or in the description. This video covered everything you need to get started with Replo product components, the magic of dynamic data, and the beauty of being able to edit once and to replicate endlessly. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our support team, and we cannot wait to see what you build.